Great to hear them from, uh, using the English as well. It's one of the first interviews ever done in English, apparently. Uh, so well done. Uh, couldn't do it in Mandarin, that's for sure. I would suck badly, really badly. How was your Mandarin? Non-existent. Okay, that's right. good. I'm yeah. slightly ahead of you then. I yep. have about five words. Ni hao. Ni hao, yeah. Well done. And a couple good. of other words, which I'm not going to be using on, on the stream. I play matchmaking a bit. So yeah, <laughs> that's the problem I found with Europe. You, you play with <laughs> Europeans and they teach you the <laughs> wrong words yeah. a lot. A lot. Uh, my Swedish is literally only swear words. That's all I know in Swedish. It uh, works, and, and some random phrases, which I thought were fairly pleasant and then found out were actually very rude. So thanks to all my <laughs> previous Swedish <laughs> friends. Uh, in matchmaking and also in my previous uh, previous teams. Uh, as you can see, the teams are just starting to get back into position, so we're a few minutes away from getting underway in game number two. In the meantime, why don't we check in with our social media thread today? We've had threads up all four days, and as ever, there is another one up on reddit.com uh, on the Global Offensive uh, Reddit right now. If you want to post your questions, we'll pose them to the panel. Uh, always renegades Tyloo with this minor motivate or demotivate other Asian squads. It should, it should motivate them if you get demotivated because they're always running against Tyloo that you have no business trying to be the best in Asia or trying Agreed. to reach anywhere, right? Like, uh, like many teams complain about, oh, we don't have competition, we don't know, uh, you know, we, we want to play against EU teams and whatnot. First beat Tyloo, first beat Renegades, and then let's talk. So uh, they have no business being demotivated just because Tyloo and Renegades are winning all the time. I like that. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, that's that's the first hurdle you gotta get, get across to be able to get into the bigger leagues, and th that's the way it is. If you keep losing to them, then it is your job to become better. You, you go back to the drawing board. You you basically just uh, become better. Yeah, that's simple it. Simple as that. Yeah, it's very simple. It's been a very competitive minor. It's not like previous it, minors where it has been very dominant with those uh, two, and they've almost <sighs> been favourites from the off, and you kind of expected them to get to. This has been much tougher. Renegades have dropped a map. They lost a match in their group stage. Didn't win. Neither of the Australian teams won their groups. Immunity have then beaten Flash. You've dominated. I think it's been pretty competitive between these four. Yeah, I mean, in the recent history of the minors, it's been Tylo, VG, and Renegades have been the three teams yeah. pretty much fighting for those two spots. And now at least we have four teams that we can think of. You know, fifth Mongols maybe. Maybe also being, you know, they're contesting people were expecting beforehand that they could be a dark horse mm. for this tournament. The so signature took a took a map or yeah, exactly. won a match so as well in a best of three. Yeah, so it's it's definitely I mean it, it this applies across the board for for the miners. It's European miners but getting a lot more competitive, better mm. teams in it. You know, I mean it, it's the same thing for everyone. It applies for Asia as well. Okay, interesting. Uh, we're apparently we're a few minutes away from the start. So uh um do, can we squeeze in one more? Question: Are we allowed to do one more question from the panel? Or they're kind to us, aren't they? We're, we're asked nicely. Thank you. Uh, would you rather play on a mediocre team with a big org or a good team with no org? <laughs> That's a no-brainer. Good team, good with, team no with no org, org. obviously. Good team with no org. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're going to get picked up at the, at the <laughs> end of the day. <laughs> if, if yeah, it's, it's uh, first of all, it's all about. I mean, obviously, money does play a part in everything in life, but it is the competitiveness. It's winning. It's it's that feel you get from from succeeding that you strive for as a competitor. Yeah. And then with a good team, you're you're gonna have that more than than with a mediocre team. So, Absolutely. and eventually, you'll get picked up by a, by an organization. See, a lesson for you from the man that knows, right? Don't take the big org who wave all the wonga in your face. Take the non-org that you get bought for and have shares in the team. Very good. Like <laughs> it. Uh, let's head over to our commentators for game number two. Thank you very much, Paul. Both these teams, of course, playing for a, a fair amount of money themselves. If they can get through to the latter stage of this event, not only will they qualify, but there's $30,000 up for grabs for the, uh, the winner. And then I think it's 15 for the second team, if memory serves me correctly. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, but the biggest thing is avoiding elimination and making sure that you're going to be able to get to that major qualifier spot, right? I mean, Renegades has already ensured that by making it to the grand final. But, you know, this is going to be a disappointment now for either of these teams. I mean, Tyloo used to making the finals. That pedigree is there for them as a brand and with some of the reigning players on the team. But you flip over to Flash Gaming, you know, Attacker and Summer, they're used to make it to finals of minors as well, right? You know, used to at least making sure they're making it to the major qualifier. And one of these groups of players is going to is gonna fold here in the lower bracket. Yep, the winner of this game, of course, plays off against Immunity in the next stage, and then Renegades are waiting for them in the Grand Finals. Renegades, of course, have already qualified. They are already going across the major qualifier, regardless of what happens in the lower brackets. That is not up for debate. But as we can see live from Beijing, where the minor is currently being hosted, you can see that Tai Lu getting themselves 
sorted for map two, which is going to be Train, the choice of Flash Gaming, after they picked up their choice of Mirage 1612 in the end. It was quite a seesaw roller coaster of a map, though. Back and forth throughout, Flash Gaming definitely had opportunities to outright win map number one dust. It wasn't a blowout performance. It wasn't a one-sided affair. Very yeah. close until the better end. Yeah, I mean, the last 11 rounds, though, you know, only one of them was won by Flash, so it was domination at the end. But you're right. right. The first half was very close, very back and forth. The beginnings of the second half, you know, fit the bill as well. But it was, you know, seemed like Flash kind of cracking under pressure. Again, I think one of the big things you got to think about here is before this tournament, Flash was never really tested. I mean, they were winning their games no problem. They won their group stage games in this minor no problem. It wasn't until, you know, they faced close games against Immunity that they really got tested. And so far, they've, like, failed every test they've taken that has required them to have to dig deep and grind out rounds and play from behind and things of that nature. You saw them starting to crack a little bit in that Mirage game, right? A little bit of money mismanagement. Uh, they they seemed to run out of ideas. You know, th there was definitely some little errors going on, really for both teams, if we're honest. But it was Tyloo who were the better end of the deal. But Train, this is supposed to be Flash's home turf. Granted, hard to say that. Small sample size. They've only played the map a couple of times. But they obviously look good in the group stages on it. They, they qualified for this minor off the back of a Train map win involved. Uh, but it's not like Tyloo or Slouches uh, on, on Train. Within their region, they have a pretty good record themselves. So I would expect that, you know, there's, since there isn't much to know about Flash, I don't know that they have like this massive advantage on Train. Yeah, it's hard to tell if this is going to be a sort of a blowout performance or if it's going to be a pretty close one, uh, similar to the, the first map. But even though, as you said, I mean, like the last 11 rounds or whatever, they only won one, a lot of those came down to like 1v1, 2v2 yep. scenarios uh, where Flash, that some of it was poor play. There's a couple of times when he lost control of the bomb that I can remember. Lovey had a P250 buy when he had $1,900 left and everyone else forced on his team, yep. which we're still confused about. So he could have got UMP armor or something. Yeah, yeah which, I mean, which seems like a small thing, but honestly, when the, when the rounds are going down to 2v2, 1v2, ones that can be the difference make to whether yeah. you win that round and force the other team into an eco or not yeah it just means that people aren't necessarily on the same page and it, in a situation like that you might think oh well, he's saving money to, to do something next round well, that really there wasn't gonna be enough money there either way for him to do much next round that that's just one detail there's a bunch of other things you can look at that really kind of illustrated that okay like it seems like flash is like really starting to uh, have trouble dealing with clutch situations and that was the case against uh the immunity as well right like i mean there was a lot of situations there where they were kind of in a similar boat, where like when they were in clutch situations, uh, particularly that game on Inferno, the 16-14 loss, they, there was a lot of, you know, clutch situations they wound up losing. Like, they lost a big one to Wizard. I think he won, like, a big 1v3 against them. Moe had that big clutch to end that game uh, in the 1v2. So, in, in tight number of situations, they've struggled not only in this series, but throughout earlier in the tournament in, in that immunity game. Yeah, with Immunity up next as well, it begs the question that which of these two teams is going to face off against them? Flash Gaming be favorites to take map number two. If we do need it, the third map will be Cobblestone, and I feel like that's completely up in the air. Could be anyone's map as well. Uh, we are just waiting, by the way, if you're curious as to why we're filling a bit of time, for one of the players on the server. So hopefully that will be rectified shortly. I've just seen he has just joined, and we're about to jump into the knife round, so we should be getting things underway very shortly. But for your prediction, you think Flash will probably take this map, but it's going to be a close one. I'm not convinced, actually. I think Tyloo could 2 this series. I mean, I think okay. these teams have, like, again, I think in this map, you're going to see some similarities to Mirage in the sense that both these teams are going to be doing a lot of, you know, very fast-paced executes on either side. You know, decent amount of utility involved, typical smoke wall stuff, typical flashes out. But a lot of very aggressive, explosive play from both of these teams. Uh, both teams like to use triple ivy quite a lot. So, again, like to gather up somewhere, try to explode out together and trade frags. So, you're going to see a lot of that again still. And it'll really come down to uh, who's a bit better on, on mid-game reading and who's a little bit better on the duels. You know, similar to what Mirage was. It was Tyloo who had it there here. We'll have to see if that carries over or not. We shall have to see if DD can get two MVPs in a row as well. Certainly a deserving winner of the first map. But here we go. We are just about to jump into what could be the last map of this best of three if Tyloo have their way. The elimination match, a lower bracket stage of the tournament. We'll see a bit of utility on Flash Gaming, including a Molotov and a Smoke. A Casa, a kit and a smoke for somebody. But apart from that, pretty much what you'd expect. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually a deagle for Kaze. That should be mentioned. I'm 
glossed over that one. So he is going to go for the Deagle. That is a bit of a power spike. Yeah, one thing about Flash is even though they can open default, they don't usually stick in default very often. They usually pretty much commit to some type of set piece very early in the round. And on this pistol, they've already gathered up here towards the inner sight. So that smoke, possibly for Z Connector or Side, will have to one Molotov to clear out one spot. And then it's just going to be an explode on the site to try to get this bomb planted. Decent positions have been assumed, though, by the CTs. So much so that they've managed to rattle off two headshots and make that a third as well as Ben Tent goes on to Kaze. That Deagle plays no part of this round. A bomb has been planted, though, courtesy of Summer before he inevitably dies. And that is the round done in a very quick amount of time. Two kills did go the way of oh, Flash and a bomb plant, so not too bad, but Ty Lu off the winning ways. Yeah, they had no trouble. I mean, they kind of played a little bit of a retake inner setup, you know, fine with conceding the bomb play, but just making sure you win the round. And a lot of teams like to play inner that way as CT. But now Flash, I mean, the decision to make here is do we heavy force buy because we got a first round bomb plant, so we could do a really heavy one? Or do you say we're going to save for that third round? And it looks like they're kind of taking a middle of the road approach. You, you see no more than $700 spent in this round. A lot of unarmored deagles. Give yourself a little bit of a chance, but the, still the focus is to get a, a decent buy in the third round. Yeah, see if we can take some of those weapons away from the CTs and then go for a full on buy in the next one. Lovey down to 31. And DD's playing aggro with his UMP. Summer's going to die. And he backs away back to the site. Flash Gaming don't really seem to be retaliating on the death of their teammate just yet. They're being smoked off into the box halls. So another solid start by Tai Lu. Looks like Flash Gaming are going to retort with an aggressive push outside by Attacker. He's already making a bit of headway here and lands the 1D. And now Captain Mo realizes a player just below him will silence Attacker. But Tai Lu retain their player advantage. Yeah, Flash still just gathered up here in the inner halls, you know, looking like that's where they want to make the play. They only have one Flash, though, to try to get out. They are sneaking Lovey, I believe, that is out ladder room to Z, but somebody looks like he will pick up on it just in time, and he does. There's the headshot. And now all focus on the lower ramp here with DD's UMP. Does get one, runs out of bullets, but no problem, pulls out the USP to finish the job, and so it will be 2-0 Tai Lu. Don't lose too much on that either. So they get to keep the UMPs in play, try to farm a little bit more cash out of them, perhaps. As they can still be useful in rounds like this one, even knowing your opponent's going to have some AKs out. So it is going to be, again, a little bit of utility being bought up. Full rifles for the most part here, though. Carson on a UMP just to get that extra nade. And again, I expect them to just commit to things fairly early and just do things fast-paced. It seems to be all I've ever seen from them on this map in the couple times they've played it. No hesitation. Well, we shall see if that will remain the case. As of course, this is a, a bit of a grudge match between Flash Gaming and Ty Lu, as they discussed on the desk. Ooh, look at this push from somebody. And I get some good information from this, even though no one's actually rotated just yet. Well, I guess they're not entirely sure as to whether players are pushing up Ivy at this point. We mm, haven't yeah. got anyone there. They can't fully commit to the rotation. It definitely will give them pause for thought. Yeah, now two players going on B. Molotov onto ramp. Flash is going to be landing as well. DD's been flashed himself. Going to get swiped from Attacker, who's now going to try and make a reload rush for Connector. In doing so, he gives his life away. But Flash Gaming are getting the kills where it counts before Captain Mo comes in with one of his own. Bomb planted. The CTs are in a spot of bother, though. Fancy one. Kaze and Kaze. They don't have the Molotov. That so often you'll see used in the box hall side, bouncing off the door onto the site to stop the defuse. They do have the player advantage. For how much longer is the question? Not for too much longer. And now Captain Mo is going to be making a dart to the site. Going to smoke it, try and defuse, land the frag on Kaze, which is absolutely massive, but Fancy Summer is going to come in with a kill of his own. There may not be enough time. It was close. But not close enough. And now HZ is forced to the site. Oh no, the whiff is real and defuse. Wait. Isn't going to be coming in. The bomb actually detonates. That must have been the closest oh. failed defuse I've ever seen. I thought he had that for so sure. Did I. Oh, man. <laughs> That's unreal. 
Did you he... also like to think if you would have finished that frag as he looked up a ramp, which he was only just like one bullet away from finishing that kill, he would have definitely gotten the fuse at that point. But the fact that it didn't happen it certainly threw a wrench in things a little bit. I need to know how close that was to being diffused. I feel like that was like 0.01 second or something insane. Yeah, it definitely felt that way. Because as soon as he whiffs the spray through the smoke, I'm like, okay, the round's done. Yeah. That, that's a defuse. Uh, no, not quite. Well then, how important that millisecond or two could be to how this game shapes up. Flash Gaming now, right back into this one, forcing the CTs to expend all of their money, but Captain Mo. Makes his AWP work. And could be on for a second as well. Yeah. If Kaze's not careful. Thinking he might show a shoulder there. Does eventually, but again, somebody pushes Tcon. This time he's rewarded with the kill and getting the bomb down. And he can try to hold on to this. Look at Bintet in the chaos, knowing that he has to be able to push through there. He knows that Flash has to try to go back and recover that bomb, so he comes right at the right time, backstabbing a player. And so this is just crumbling for Flash. Somebody continuing to wreak havoc here in the T-Connector, and that's the end of the round. Great for Tyloo, resets Flash. And again, Flash usually known to just go for set pieces right away. They try to do something a little bit slower pace, and they just got picked apart. Uh, picked off one by one. So Tyloo, they have managed to not only hold their nerve, and keep their economy ticking forward, but also put Flash back into a broken situation themselves. So after getting that bomb plant into the super close defuse, Flash gaming back into uh, P250s and a Deagle, and that's pretty much it. DD's going to go for the fast peak. Captain Mo, a pretty straightforward AWP shot. Attacker will be silenced. The bomb, which was originally thinking of coming through the team main side, is now going to see Kaze pull himself all the way back. But now Didi is lighting up box halls with two kills of his own with the M4. And Kaze is pretty much just going to have to fully commit with Kasa and see if they can get a bomb plant. There's really nothing else they can hope for out of this round. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't really a whole lot to hope for in general when you're, you're sitting on a mostly P250s and things of that nature. So Tyloo going to get a clean start here. Only that, like, fine tune or execute and, like, a last second failed defuse has been the only way they've been able to win around thus far. And money's still tight. So, again, just another round without too much behind it. This is giving Tai Lu a lot of opportunities to just more easily extend their lead as they are well bought up. And they have plenty of money in the bank on at least three of their players. Yeah, additionally, with building up the economy, it just affords the more ops going through into the later rounds. Yep. Which is going to be great news as they are a team that too often go for double ops setups. It's going to be a complete slaughter on Pop Dog. Class up the only player to retort. Not for too much longer. Only somebody falls down. Flash Gaming will have a buy now as a result of the two previous lackluster ones. Kaze has an AWP, but it's going to be Glass Cannon. Yeah, I would expect now, with them having full utility again, again, you could expect a lot more set pieces, but also because Kaze has the AWP, you could see them try to give him a chance to take a pick here or two at T-Con or Ivy or something like that, see if he can find an opening for you. But again, I know Flash prefers just to go pretty heavy-handed into a set piece immediately. And we're going to see a lot of action at Ivy right now. Yeah, multiple players converging on that area. It's actually four in total. Two for the CTs, two for the terrorists. And HZ kind of caught halfway down Ivy, has no backup. At least gets off on train. Honestly, HZ getting a kill from that position is, is not too shabby. When he gets double peat like that. Captain Mo getting the kill on Summer. You fancied Summer to get the insta headshot. Big trades going the way of Tai Lu. Finally, Flash Gaming have something to be happy about as Lovey takes control of Pop Dog. And then he walks out into an AWP. Yeah, that smoke didn't do him any favors over there. Easy gap for Bintet to get him with that AWP, but it's a two-on-two. Two. Things will slow down a bit. Bomb's still down towards T-Spawn. Both Ops are the ones that are still up for Ty Lu. Kaze also with one. So only one rifle in the mix here. And that rifle's dead. So it's all an AWP affair. 
two surely better than one. Although Kaze does have some serious potential with the AWP. 30 seconds to try and utilize it. You see Tyloo electing to just gather up together. You know, rather than being split apart, they want to focus down. Which is not a bad idea in a situation like this where you have two AWPs. You want to make sure you're able to trade like this. So they, they do split now, though. It forces Kaza uh, to actually just go for the outright plant. He's got seven seconds. So even if he does get this plant, it's likely he'll die afterwards. But oh, what a shot. I don't think he has time, though. Hell of a try, but ultimately, it's not going to pay off for Flash Gaming. Yeah, the clock is worse enemy in a situation like that. Just Tyloo winning out the early exchange at Ivy certainly helped things along. Ben Tet getting a couple of nice AWP frags there as well towards the end, forcing the 2v1. So Tyloo is uh, is off to a great start, and they already have the one map on their side. So pressure on against Flash, who, again, could be facing elimination any moment now if this keeps up. As we are going to see them work into something a bit faster, coming out of outer quick and already an initial exchange taking place at ladder room. Excellent incendiary though. Lovey wanted to barrel out of Pop Dog. Incendiary in his face, followed by a <laughs> smoke in TV. Lurking in the shadows of the smoke. Plucking out two frags, giving Tyloo the advantage once more. Just seems like Flash can't catch a break, and neither can Kaze. His opposite number of Captain Mo will extinguish his flame. Did you ever, did you ever watch Dexter's Laboratory, the cartoon way back in the I day? I did a long time ago, yeah. yeah Didi was just screaming like, Didi. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can think of when he makes a play like that. Just imagine one of the guys from Flash being like Dexter going, Didi. But, oh, there's still a chance for a 1v2 here for Summer. So let's get back to it. He's got a lot of time. Just the bomb is a little bit out of reach. But we'll see if he can grab it. CTs are isolated for the time being, though. They're trying to keep global presence on both sites. And maybe there's an option for two separate 1v1s. Ben Tet and his AWP trained over on the Pop Dog side. Fancy is going to be pushing through. Has spotted Ben Tet, but it's made noise. Now you're expecting to see the other CT come to help him out, but DD's still stranded on B site. This now goes from possible to probable for Fancy. It's a horrible site to retake. Especially on 22 health, there are so many different angles that you have to cover. And it's not even like he has a smoke or anything to try and draw out Fancy. It would be surprising to me if Fancy doesn't clutch from this scenario now. He's just going to sit in and bide his time in T main. The bomb, not directly planted for him, but it's not too far for him to check. And... DD, as a result, is actually checking Ivy instead. That's the one position he's going to be able to look for. And now he's just going to hold down on the site. Here comes the peak from Fancy. And that's going to be all she wrote for this round. Flash Gaming do pick up a second. And I ha have to feel that the CTs should have been playing together. Yeah, the other big thing there in the 1v1 is, is if you've got a kit, and you're, I mean, you're, you're either taking a risk of, I'm going to clear all these spots, and if I find them, great, I have a chance to win. But if not, then I can't win. Whereas if you tap the bomb, you have a kit that gives you a little bit of extra time. Maybe you can draw somebody out. He gambled on just trying to clear out Ivy entirely. There was nothing there. And then at that point, he's forced to commit. And that's an easy clutch at the end of the day in the 1v1. But the fact that he even got to that point was pretty crazy considering the amount of work that DD did put in in the early part of the round in ladder room. Hmm. Playing his heart out so far, as he did on the first map, of course. He was the MVP of map one. Flash Gaming calling a timeout. Want to make sure they don't fall into another trap of resetting their round loss bonus into... Losing ways once more. Tylee will have a purchase of their own to fall back on, which will include an AWP on Captain Mo. Somebody has a decision to make. Has 6.9k still remaining. So if they want to go for a double AWP, it is very much a possibility. But he goes for UMP instead. So it's going to keep him with 4.9k. Yeah, so uh, goes for the UMP over the M4. Yeah, tactical timeout from Flash, because they know this is an important round. They need to win this to get back in. If they lose, it's a money reset. They're going to come out of outer again just so rapidly. All the nades are already out. Captain Mo, though, is in position to strike alongside Ben Tet. And Flash Gaming, are they about to rinse and repeat from the last time they won the round? It's looking so likely. Only Fancy is left, and he has one lonely health. An AK to boot. Change his name again, the Fancy 1 HP. 
Indeed. And for how much longer really is the question. And, well, there you have it. Just a few seconds. He was living on borrowed time. Tai Lu have done it. Double AWP also picked up. Kaze with a generous donation to somebody. He will accept. And again, we talked about Flash's tendency to love to commit to early explosive executes right off the bat. Not fool around with defaults too much. And Tai Lu handles them so well most of the time. And they've only given up two rounds. They've been on point defending against that. They haven't shied away from facing these battles. As it looks like Flash are going to do much of the same thing, but without any utility or armor behind it. So we see all gathered up in their halls right now, including the bomb carrier. See if they can at least get a bomb plan. It's going to be difficult when you have DD playing up close and Ben's head already rotating over as well at upper. The smooth camera moves. Give you an idea as to where the two CTs are set up on B. Bente at the back, DD at the front. And now Flash Gaming, as you highlighted, with not too much in their back pocket. They're just going to make a waterfall Ooh. outside of B. The dam has been placed though by Bente. He misses out on quite a few bullets to the end, but tags <laughs> up Luffy enough that he gets owned by gravity itself. The bomb, although, has been planted. In which case, Flash have pretty much done what they set themselves out for. And Fancy pull off something pretty amazing. No. No. The bomb is being diffused. It's really cool you actually see the defuse from anyone's perspective. Yep. You have a general idea as to how close it is. Really cool touch. I also feel like one of the biggest things that people have talked about with putting a timer on the screen is that you feel like you take away from the suspense a little bit and from the excitement, the hype of the cast. But I noticed that this um, bomb ticker and diffuser... It's not, I feel like it's not 100% accurate. It gives you a general sense of how much time is left, but I don't think it completely tells you. So there is still that uh, ability to kind of wonder just a bit if it is going to go through or not. So you still get that suspense factor, but you get some type of idea of where the bomb is or defuse is at, if that makes sense. See, I also feel like the suspense factor, knowing how long there is to a defuse and looking from a T's perspective, knowing they have got, they've got to get move on. Uh, the bomb is being yeah. defused right now. They have to try and peek or something like that. So it feels like a nice middle ground what PGL has done with that is, I guess, the point. Uh, so definitely cool stuff to see new things being broke out. This PGL has always kind of been known to set the bar Rip. for new innovative production stuff. And Kaze looking to break through in this round as he does get that opening pick. We haven't seen him doing a whole lot with AWP on this map. He didn't really have it on T-side Mirage. There was never really the money for it. Yep, yeah, indeed. I mean, he's only got four kills, so he had three before this round. And we are now into round 11. So it gives you an idea of uh, the little impact that he's had. Whereas, honestly, both AWPers on the side of Tai Lu have been doing a solid job. Bintet's on 12. Captain Moe's on 12. Collectively, 24 frags. And most of them have been AWP kills. Now they have three AWPs. As if two wasn't enough. As somebody gets Kaze down and trades out. That being said, though, Flash Gaming are going to take one of those AWPs away. Lovey. Now has one for himself. Ben Tech going to put his up to use. Looking for a second shot. Not quite going to get it. As Fancy hops up over towards the CT staircase. Bomb has been planted in amongst all the chaos. Yeah, this back hauls control that Flash has makes it so much more difficult for Tyler to rotate the way that they want to. They have to constantly worry about him. But now they've finally gotten him down. They have kits. They have time. And they have the man advantage now as well. But ops are hard to retake with. Sure are. HZ getting the kill though with the M4 is going to help. Madison Casa, that is a rough spray to watch. And in doing so, it will be the defuse. Tai Lu with yet another round. 9 to 2 now. It's definitely just islands of rounds in the ocean that is Tai Lu who are up now 9 to 2. So the money has just been a constant battle for Flash. The amount of rounds they've had full comfortable buys is so damn low rather than too damn high. Fair enough. Can't argue. Yeah, I think Casa's had uh, Kaze, so, sorry, I'm falling into Yeah, it, it's it's a rough one. It's a rough Kaze, one. Kaze, the AWPer, as opposed to the in-game leader, has had two or three AWPs on this half, it feels like. Not too many. Galil, UMP. The sacrifice is made for more utility, but even then there's not much to play with and a lot of time left on the clock. Seems like Inner Halls is once again the main focus, though there is still a couple of players over here towards Ivy and Tcon, so they can easily transition ladder into an outer split, so it's not as if they're committed. Just looking to see if they can get something to work with before they commit. 
DD just jiggle peeking around here. Not going to give them the battle, though. Begins to back off. Actually gets some damage through there on the lovey, I believe. Through the wall. So some free damage. Oh, lovey down to 46. It's going to stay. Especially if he plans to peek out of Catwalk. A bullet away from death, potentially. And, of course, he was the play, play that crated off Catwalk earlier, so... Where he's going to hope that isn't a, uh, a repeat performance. Very centralized defense, actually. 2 on B and 2 around connector for fast rotations if it's required. Putting out a couple rounds over on the B site, trying to keep them interested while the rest of the terrorists now start to funnel their way through onto the A side. Some smoke's going to be preceding them. But somebody, he's able to just stay in position. Nothing is cording him off. They need to put a smoke down here if they're going to push. But fortunately, Attacker and Cast are able to land the kills. HZ from the back of the side. The Vivi lays the hammer down. The bomb's been planted. But we've seen so many defuses already by Ty Lu. You can't write them off this round. Ebox Mentat thinks someone's there. That would be a correct assumption. But flushing him out is a whole different ball game. He's now going to spot him. He's fighting his time. Didn't want to shoot prematurely. And now Summer from Ivy is going to at least bring this back into the realms of possibility for Flash Gaming. Lovey gets him from behind. Flash Gaming with a third round. Finally going to convert one of these plants. Yeah, I felt like Tyler just overcommitted on a couple of those kills. I mean, after somebody gets to first AWP frag, it goes for the repeat instead of just holding an angle. And there's also another player that kind of pushed out by himself as well that lost a 1v1 duel. So a couple of things kind of fighting against Tyloo at that round. And we'll concede one back to Flash. But Flash has yet to be able to streak two together. We'll see if they can break that curse. They need as much as they can get out of this half. Again, this is their map pick. This is a map they're supposed to feel comfortable on their T side. And much like Mirage, there hasn't been a whole heck of a lot there. We see it's not because they haven't tried different things, that's for sure. They've definitely given a couple of different options out there, but the success rate is just so low. Another off kill by Tyloo. Rack him up. Must be getting towards 30 at this stage. Both Ben Tet and Captain Mo find themselves on 16 kills and 12, respectively. Been a bunch of kills on the other side of the coin as well. Moving back into heaven is somebody. A minute to play with. Terrace have managed to get themselves out onto round E box. There's Captain Mo with yet another one. Summer is going to answer back, but that is the only kill that Flash Gaming have picked up in this round. Are they going to be able to get two or three more? Casa. He's going to pick up his first. Has full utility. But there's so many angles for him to watch out for. He's going to come through with another kill. Things are starting to get interesting now. The downside for Carter, though, is he doesn't have control of the bomb and only 28 health remaining. And 28 seconds on top of that. But another kill goes his way. Ty Lu, surely you're not going to lose this round. And Carter picks up the clutch on oh, 1 HP. What a beast. The in-game leader put in the work. The coach, the guy who barely has even played the game in comparison to everyone else over the last few years, yet he comes up huge here. Just dancing around the trains, finding all the right angles and winning all the 1v1 duels that got thrown at him. And that's the one thing you could fault Tyloo for. They didn't really take him on together. They gave him a chance. They gave him that doorway open to waltz into a round and he'll storm through. And that's four for Flash. And they have Tyloo on a lower buy now because of it all. So all of a sudden, there's still hope to make this a closer half. But Bintet, the playmaker, able to get an instant five on four. And there's not much that Flash were able to do about it. And there's also a flank coming in as well from Captain Mo already in inner halls. This could be devastating for Flash. Attack is out on Catwalk, though. And Lovey takes down Didi. So the flank is all well and good. But if the foundations of the site fall down... There's nothing to build off. 2-1-2. Two two. Captain Mo picks himself up a 5-7 frag. Trades out for the AK. Fancy, Summer, and Lovey. Still have the sight. But Lovey's going to get taken down. And now it's on Fancy. He knows where one of these players are. But he's going to get peaked. And his position being compromised is all that remains. The task is done by Tyloo, 10 to 4. 
after Casa picks up a crazy clutch, they're right back into losing ways. And it feels like Flash Gaming, the only rounds they've picked up have been of someone having an individual moment of brilliance. Other than that, it's just been pretty consistently Tai Lu. Yeah, the only exception to that I feel like I can remember is that one outer execute they had. I think it may have been like the second round they won. Where they just had like a good execute on outer that went really well. But yeah, other than that, it has been individual efforts. That is certainly the case, which is something you can't always rely on. Kars is not going to win you a 1v3 like that every single time. So you got to have something that's a little bit more stable. And it hasn't been there for them as Tyloo have a great chance to find 11 here. As again, Flash, much like the rest of this half, since they've never been able to streak more than two rounds together, all their rounds on islands, the money has just been is terrible and now as they come out of ladder room somebody is putting the final touches on this half perhaps yeah, at this point Tali just styling on a flash gaming maybe <laughs> even got the org why the hell not they don't lose a single player in the final round and 11 to 4 will be the scoreline Bentet on 17 kills a lot of those off the orb everybody double digits yep. whereas some are the only player that has more than 10 on flash gaming and that pretty much sums everything up wasn't that the story as well against immunity on top of always like struggling in clutch situations though in fact Carson did get one clutch here so to be fair at least that went well but the other big storyline in that immunity was that it seemed like they weren't getting much out of their star player particularly Kaze was struggling on an inferno game against immunity and while he did have his moments on Mirage He's definitely struggled here. An attacker, you know, normally supposed to be the other big skill guy next to a guy like Summer. He hasn't really been of much help here either. Again, a lot of duels being won by Tyloo, and that's why you see, like, pretty tight-knit frag distribution outside of, you know, Bentet way up top. So, Flash, you got to feel like this is a must-win situation in this pistol round. Otherwise, you're just letting Tyloo get way out in front. Chances now are over. You lose this throughout the tournament. Already in the lower bracket. Flash Gaming, if they want to qualify for the major qualifier, the comeback has to start now. Tyloo. Incredibly close to moving through to the next stage. Of course, their work is far from done, even if they do win this. Next, have immunity. Another best of three. Utility, plenty of it for Tyloo. Not committing any other dust. So they're keeping their options open for the time being. Yeah, somebody's the one who has all the utility in these tour inner halls. So we can obviously throw that utility through the windows into the outer yard. You could also maybe try to throw a bit of a fake towards inner, try to pull a rotation. Again, I know Tali likes to run triple Ivy a lot on gun rounds, and it might be the case here on a pistol that they try for the same lot. Are we really going to see an inner back hall split? It feels a lot like that. I can see what they're looking to do is fake off all the CTs, and they are wrapping themselves around alarmingly fast rate, especially as Didi's got the kill. They're going to keep a couple players on A, though, because they're not completely sold on this and Bente in mid-air, dunking Kaze. What a strange strat this has been, but it seems to have been successful. I don't know if I'd call it strange. I'd call it brilliant. That was a solid fake, and it helps that DD actually gets an entry on Inner at the same time. I mean, there's a lot of utility there. You're taking a frag. I mean, that sells it a lot. Flash are forced to respect it when you're losing players and you have so many resources spotted. And I thought maybe they might go Inner back halls, but they actually turn into a bit of a fake Ivy into the outer yard. I've never seen them do that on a pistol before. I've seen them do it on rifle rounds, so that was kind of neat to, you know, put it into even a low econ situation like a pistol, and they get the 12th round, so that was uh, that was pretty sick. Imagine that. It's Tyloo with the crafty tactics. You could see it completely caught Flash Gaming off guard. They originally rotated three or four players straight through onto B, and then they had second thoughts when they didn't see the bomb. But by that time, it was too little too late. CZ for Lovey. Gonna try his arm on team main. Nothing will stick though. Just negligible damage has been traded to the terrorists. Meanwhile, Kazi's down to 30. Still keeping DD up on Ivy while the rest of the team tries to work through team main side. Up through bathrooms. Now Kaz is gonna have a quick peek with his CZ or at least just hold position. And he may get action because the terrorists are coming. 
Manipulating light. Unfortunately, he gets the action but isn't able to get the kill. Somebody will get the entry and in doing so opens up B for business. Then Tep finalizes the kill onto attacker. And now the bomb will be coming in for the plant. Now Flash Gaming have a decision because they've gone in on this round. Do they want to go for this or try and save these CZs? I mean, DD is the target, I suppose. If they can kill him, they can pick up his UMP. But it doesn't seem to be that easy. Yeah. The very least, fancy saving. I mean, he's in position to save the Yeah, CZ. saving CZ armor is important here because you can at least try to pose a similar threat in the next round as you did in this one because everyone else is going to have to full save. You need that for the next buy. So at least give yourself something to work with in the next round is, is the thought process here. and That's the correct one, but they've already lost one of those players, and so now it's just fancy summer here at taking a waltz over to his spawn again, and looks like he'll have no problem saving onto this. They'll have a little bit of something in the next round, but that's really gonna be about it. Maybe you see some P250s being purchased. And we do see actually a Deagle Smoke being bought by Attacker, as well as a Head Armor. So he's going all in. Yeah, definitely, it seems that way. Did he jump the gun? Are the rest of the team yeah, just the rest hold of off? Seems like everyone else is just going to stick with their $1,900 yeah. or so. Just a taco that's gone all in on this one. Yeah, full USPs for Lovey Kaze and Karsa as we are going to see Tai Lu looking like they want to just kind of feel things out here over towards Ivy as well as leaving a couple towards Econ. And Ben Tet, though, already finding an entry out of Ivy and he'll just keep rolling with it. There's a couple more players to deal with here, including that Deagle. But he stays in the fire a bit too long. That Deagle and Kevlar pretty much yielding nothing. Business as usual for Tai Lu. Picking up kills wherever they move. Oh, I think that was a stray bullet through the smoke connecting onto Casa. Ten round lead. And uh, attack is into another Deagle Kevlar as a result of his previous buy. Everyone else will be coming through with M4s. Lovey may sacrifice with a UMP to get more utility. Indeed, he shall. This also will afford them a kit as he has $450 left. Please tell me you buy a kit, lovey. Please. I can't deal with it if you don't buy a kit. All right, I, just, I need to double check to make sure. Yeah, he has $450 on the kit. I'm, I'm triggered. I'm triggered right now. You should be. That's the second time that he's been the one to kind of mismanage money he had left over in, in a situation like this. Happened on Mirage once as well. So you got to wonder, again, is the pressure cracking? Attacker force buying Deagle armor. Both rounds were then having an M4. This round, the rest of his team. Got to wonder about that as well. Or if that was calculated to whatever degree, but it's a fast hit from Tyloo in the inner side. Carson, though, behind the spools, able to slow things down, but only just for a moment as the trades are favoring for the bomb plant. But here comes a sweep from Lovey, but he gets busted, not able to get in there. That looked like it might be close. There's a lot of low HP players out, but it's just not going to matter. And Tyloo approaching series point unless the miracle unfolds. Attacker with one, but that's gonna be it. And it turned out the the kit didn't matter anyway, but I'm still I'm still a little bit triggered by that, I'm not gonna lie. It's okay. We'll get through it. Flash gaming probably won't though. <laughs> no, probably not. They're probably figuratively going home and could literally go home as well, I guess. They're all right there in their home country here. As of course this is brought to you from Beijing. You may see our first Chinese team entirely eliminated from the tournament with no hopes of the major qualifier, which would certainly be a hit to guys like, again, Attacker and Summer or Fancy One, and then Kars has a coach who are used to being in finals in minors. We are seeing Tyler looking like they don't want to waste any time trying to finish this one off as they come quick into the outer bomb site and they already have the entries. Add another one into the mix as HZ puts out Attacker. Two remaining CTs, both in connect, are going to get pop flashed into a push. Kaze and Kasa, can they remedy the situation? Cure the ailment that has been this, I was going to say CT side of train, but honestly the whole map has been very poor. Kasa with another one, but they're both low, they've both been found out. And it's just about the last nail in the coffin and it has been put in by HZ. 16-4 in the end on Flash Gaming's choice of map, it was brutal. And it's going to be a 2-0 to zero win overall. Was it Savage? 
as sure well. Was. I think it's safe to say 16-4 loss is savage. Yeah, yeah no uh, it's uh, definitely a tough one. I mean, Mirage, obviously a bit closer, but again, it was dominance from Tyloo in the last 11 rounds. Really didn't give up much. And in this game, they just didn't give up much, period. I mean, again, they limited to Flash, only getting around here and there, never able to get their money in order, never able to streak together the rounds, never to able to find consistent success, relied a lot on individual plays to get rounds through. And then on train, it was... Uh, nothing in the second half either. I mean, it was basically Ty Lue just, you know, checked in, you know, punched in the clock, took care of business as usual, and now they're moving on to play immunity and the lower bracket finals for a shot at that major qualifier spot. Yeah, and I mean, on the side of Ty Lue, multiple players could get the MVP for that map because everyone sure. everyone was pulling their way. Everyone was having a solid game. Bent out in the first half, I think, dropped 17 kills, mm -hmm. most of which were AWP kills. At points, they had three AWPs on their side. They were all getting kills with the AWPs. It, I mean, it was just a massacre. There was nothing feasible there that Flash could bring to the table. Kaze was kind of absent with the AWP again. Didn't have that many opportunities, though, with the AWP, to be fair. So I don't know what you take away from that if you're Flash. Tyler looked great, though. Yeah, they definitely did, and it's good to see them in good form because it would be nice for them, you know, guys who are used to being in finals to make one more, right, to still put China on the map in the major qualifier. Yeah, it's one of those kind of situations where I, I hope that Flash don't get too deterred by that because 16-4 battering is obviously going to feel really terrible when you're getting knocked out of the event, but ultimately, Tyler just showed up, Flash didn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess there's really no uh, other way to put it, to be 100% honest with you. I mean, again, that map was very straightforward. Absolute dominance from Ty Lu. You know, even though Flash is supposed to be kind of tactical with Karsa coming up with all these different set pieces, he only had, like, one really set piece that actually went successful on the outer bomb site, and the rest of it was just lacking. You know, the kills just weren't there. I mean, you can come up with the best tactic, the best execute. It can be fine-tuned, but if you're not hitting the shots at the end of the day, particularly as some of your star players that you're used to relying on to, you know, get their kills, and they're not necessarily delivering on a consistent basis, then, you know, it really puts a wrench in things. And, again, I feel like Flash is crumbling under pressure a lot. A lot of money mismanagement situations, a lot of, uh, you know, just cracking and clutch situations, making errors. So, yeah, they're just not ready yet. They're not used to being put to the test, and they failed this one. And we'll pass it to the desk to see what their thoughts are. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, game one then of the day goes the way of China's number one. It is Tyler that move on to the lower bracket final. We'll take on Immunity next, and we'll uh, we'll figure it out. I mean, there's nothing for the us to really say because Dust pretty much summarized he, the whole he's thing. Kinda, he's kind of done the job for you. Pretty so much. Uh, how about we just leave the yeah, premises? Yeah, we're, we're, we're out of a job <laughs> right now. By the looks of it, <laughs> it's like what do we do here? Uh, well, I mean, let, let's start by talking about the team that they've beaten. Let's talk about Flash. Is this acceptable for them in terms of a top four finish? They've made it to day four. They're a new lineup in some respects. They're still learning as a team. No, they they, they were built to win, obviously. Uh, trying built to, to win. Yeah, I mean, you get the in-game leader that's supposed to be super tactical. You get the fire, supposedly get the firepower in that lineup, but it was absent. Like the, the, a lot of the players, Kaze was a, not in the picture. Was his uh, wrist injury to blame? Who knows? Attacker wasn't really there. Uh, well, nobody on that team really did anything, to be honest with you. And, uh, I mean, they, they, they had different approaches, they had different tactics to be thrown at, methodical plays, executes, both bomb sides, but they just couldn't, again, get the punches in once they had to. And on the other hand, you have players like Ben Ted coming in hot, he was destroying once again, just single-handedly, uh, basically stopping his opposition, along with Mo as well, having a great game. That was just a one-team show, really. I mean, Flash was absent. I'm very disappointed, to be honest with you. I had higher expectations for them. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the Mummy MVP for this particular game. He's back again. He's back. <laughs> Better than before. Uh, the anomalies is. are over. <laughs> indeed. Uh, <laughs> Pentet with a 5.58 impact rating, four retakes, uh, one clutch kill, four openings, and two trades, along with a 22 for six. But still, I have to say, what triggers the crap out of me is just the overextending from a lot of this player. Captain Mo, for example, I. Please, someone with a whip, go and smack that boy. Assistant coach. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Assistant I'm coach. so triggered watching the, some of those peaks. But I isn't that to part of he, who he is? No. What makes him who he no. is? No. <laughs> it shouldn't be. But, but it he, should not be. But would he get the kills that he gets? Would he surprise kill these things? Like, who the if, heck if he goes and peeks <laughs> alley late? Uh, when you know there's opposition there, could be an opera. I'm just going to creep down there. They can peek. 
weak and die. It's like, what's the point? You already had the man advantage. This triggers me <laughs> like when you play anyone else who actually know how to play Counter Strike. If we, then if we you're got gonna, the, gonna lose. If we got the mummy MVP for triggerers ready, <laughs> uh, impact rating of triggering 6.95 on the Richter scale right now for 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 Natu. You, you really don't like that. At <laughs> all, I do, do you? not. No, it's no. I like watching it. It's fun. <laughs> Get out, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, quick final thoughts then on Tyloo moving through, because we've talked about Flash and how disappointing it was for them to finish fourth, but Tyloo moved through. They've, they've made hard work of this tournament, seemingly, but th they're still there. Um, okay, one thing which I think got a little uh, overseen was we all talked about like how Flash was a team made to win. You know, They've been secretly practicing all this while, but end of the day, playing an actual game with that lineup it adds a lot of experience. Like you could see it crumble under pressure because they haven't really played any games mm. earlier with this particular lineup. Tyler, on the other hand, ever since they picked up Benta, they've played a ton of games. A ton of games. And that showed they were very confident under pressure. Everyone's going off. I think four players were opting there as well, by the way. They were just molesting Flash Gaming. So Tyler, right now, China number one. And I think the next matchup is going to be interesting because Tyler really look hot here. Mm. And Immunity... Yeah, they look really good against Flash Gaming. But Flash Gaming overall has kind of really crumbled the past couple of days in the best of three series. So I think uh, Tai Lu, well, uh, let's see if you're going to be having an all Australian finals or will China still, you know, make it through at least till the grand finals? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, it's coming up after an extended break where the team of obviously who haven't played yet Immunity will be uh, ready to get set up on the main stage here in Beijing and we'll be moving into that lower bracket final. The questions now with three teams left are is it going to be an all-Australian grand final? And are we going to have two Australian teams going off to the offline finals? Or is it going to be a repeat for the third successive Asia minor final with Tyloo versus Renegades? We're going to find out. It's coming up after the break. <laughs>